Hey guys, Mike here. I want to start by asking you guys a question. Think back to your last few patients. How many of them had symptoms like altered mental status, tachycardia, hypotension, and maybe even were pale, cool, and clammy? Really think about how many patients you see that show one or more of these symptoms. Shock is a subject that is glanced over far too often in EMT and paramedic class. Maybe you guys are feeling like, man, I really wish they covered shock more. I want to solve that downfall and help you guys understand the underlying cause of shock. It wasn't until later in my EMS career that I realized that so many of my patients are really close to shock or are already in shock when I meet them. For a subject we glance over so quickly in class, we deal with shock on a regular basis. And I think the lack of education has added to the misdiagnosis and mistreatment of shock by EMS providers in the field. Shock is a state in which the body cannot sufficiently maintain homeostasis by means of adequate tissue perfusion. Perfusion is defined as the delivery of sufficient oxygen, glucose, and other nutrients, while also the removal of waste products like carbon dioxide from each individual cell of the body. The cardiovascular system is leading point on carrying out tissue perfusion. The body needs the heart, the vasculature, and the blood to be working in peak order to maintain adequate perfusion. I like to imagine these parts as internal plumbing, so to speak, with the heart as the pump, the vasculature as the pipes, and the blood as the fluid. If even just one of these internal plumbing components fails, then perfusion also fails, causing the development of shock. Take the heart or the pump first. If someone has an MI or a myocardial infarction, otherwise known as a heart attack, Heart tissue is actively dying. This dead heart tissue is unable to beat properly, thus decreasing cardiac output or the amount of blood that comes out of the left ventricle per pump. This decrease in blood out of the heart also means there is a decrease in blood getting to the tissues. Conditions like MI, heart failure, cardiac tamponade, and even pericarditis all create hypoperfusion or shock by affecting the heart's or pump's ability to eject blood out of the left ventricle. Now what about when the vasculature or the pipes fail? In conditions like sepsis, anaphylaxis, or even neurologic injury, the body's arteries and veins lose their tone. In other words, they vasodilate, becoming bigger, and at times they even become leaky. If your arteries and veins are too big, blood then begins to pool within them. This blood never will reach its final destination because it's either sitting in a vein or artery or has been leaked into an interstitial space. And we already know that when blood does not reach the tissues, perfusion decreases, causing shock. Lastly, let's think about the blood itself or the internal delivery fluid. Blood is what carries the oxygen, glucose, and other nutrients to each cell and it's also what carries the waste material away from the cells. If there is not enough fluid in the vasculature because maybe somebody has an uncontrolled bleed or maybe they're dehydrated because of vomiting, diarrhea, or even fever, a decrease in the amount of fluid will have less capability of carrying those nutrients to the necessary cells, thus causing hypoperfusion or shock. This video is meant to explain the concepts of shock. I will be detailing the specific types of shock in other videos, which you can find in this playlist right here. Well, guys, that's it for this one. Stay safe out there, and I will see you guys in the next video.